Hi, everyone. My name is Scott Morris. Welcome back to another one of our GTS Publisher to Retailer webinars. Uh, we are here today with USAopoly. We have Katie and Ross. We're going to be talking about two new games. One is a brand new release and one is about to release. Um, very excited about both of these for two different, completely different reasons. Um, the first one is a game called Hughes and Cues, which is it's actually designed by a really good friend of mine, <laughs> Scott Brady. Uh, so very excited to talk about that one. And then the second one is the Harry Potter House Cup competition game, which if any of you know me, one of my favorite genres and mechanics is uh, worker placement. And this is worker placement, uh, very similar to kind of like a Lords of Waterdeep level game, which is one of my favorite games of all time. So I think that's gonna be a really fun discussion. Um, and just selfishly, I'm very jealous because behind Ross, he has the Scooby-Doo Escape from the Haunted Mansion game sitting up there taunting me. So. <laughs> yeah, I've got Scooby-Doo and I've got Upside Drawn for Telestrations as well. Oh, yeah, you do. So, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah, your head's yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know I got a big head. So, um, Just as some housekeeping things, if this is your first time joining us on one of our webinars, I always tell everybody everything is on the table, pardon the pun, but you're allowed to ask any kind of questions you like. Um, to ask a question, it's really easy. Uh, if you're on a computer, you can hover over your video window and there's a chat bubble at the bottom. You can then send a message to all panelists, which are myself, Katie, and Ross. Or you can send a message to all panelists and attendees, which will get to everybody. Either one is fine. Um, Ross and Katie, that's nothing you have to worry about. I'll manage the chat window. Oh, okay. I'll work them into discussion. You're welcome to, but you don't have to worry about it at all. So I'll, I'll make sure to jump those in. So um outside of that i don't want to steal any thunder because these are awesome really cool games so um just so everyone knows usaopoly is uh literally one of our biggest partners um tremendous line of stuff well we're only going to be talking about a couple of games today they just they have so many good games and so many games that aren't just good ips but are good games and good ips one of the things that ross and i've talked a lot about in the past is anyone can just slap an IP onto a game and put it out there, but actually putting some development thought and work and effort behind making that a good game in addition to a good IP, that's where it kind of kicks it to the next level. And a lot of the USAopoly games do that. They're really, really good. So um, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you over to Ross and Katie and let them tell you about these awesome games. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. That was a wonderful opening. And, and something that we've talked about a whole bunch too, like one of the things we try to do at the op is to make sure that along with all the games that we're doing is they tell a story. So whether it's a Harry Potter or a Scooby-Doo or even a party game, right? Like there's gotta be some kind of like initiative. What are we playing through? What What is happening? We're not just taking the, the next hot game and putting it with a hot license and doing all of that. We would love creating a story and making sure there's, there's a lot more to that when you're putting it on the table and spending your time. So uh, I'm Ross Thompson. I'm a, uh, the, a uh, marketing manager here at the op. I've been here for a few years now, and uh, it's exciting. We're going to have a good day. And then Katie? Hi, welcome. Yeah, we are excited about these new games, like Scott mentioned, along with our whole new line for 2020. Um, so, yeah, I'm a senior account manager here at the op, and today we're going to talk about two great games. Cool. That sounds great. So our first game that we're talking about is going to be Hughes and Cues. Uh, so you may have seen it online. We've been promoting it a whole bunch. It is available now. Mm -hmm. um, and so this game is a three to 10 player game, uh, plays into about 30 minutes. Um, and what it is, it's, it's a color guessing game. So what you're doing is you've got this board here. I'm just gonna turn the box around, right? So on this box right here, you've got this full big color board and I'll pull the board out in a little bit, um, but it's massive. It's super cool and it's full of all these different colors. And what you're doing is you're gonna get, um, essentially you're gonna be giving out clues to get people to guess different color squares and then they're going to be guessing uh, which one it is. And so let's say it was my turn, I'd get one of these cards and we can pull them out in a little bit, but on the cards, it'll have four different colors or Katie can grab it too. Um, and there'll be four different colors on there and whether it could be a shade of blue or a green or a yellow, and you're gonna give a one word clue uh, to help people to guess that. And so, so like right there, we've got, Katie's got like C11, it's like a kind of a cool magenta and M6 is kind of like an avocado green. E20 is like lavender in K12. I don't know what that is. Maybe like one day old block, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. So essentially what you do is um, Katie would give a, a, or I would give a, a one word cue. Um, so if we were going to go with that magenta color, um, you know, we could say something like, so you can't give uh, cl clues that are 
uh, primary colors, you can't say things like red, green, blue. But in that case, we could say lavender, mm -hmm. right? So if I was to say lavender, we could do that. And then everybody has these different cones, which are kind of hard to see. I think Katie can pull those out. And so uh, there's three different cones, essentially. So you've got two that you're going to be using to put uh, on the board and then mm -hmm. one that's going to mark your score. And so you would then put that down somewhere on the board, um, anywhere. And let's say we ended up putting down our cones somewhere kind of in this purplish zone, uh, but it wasn't the right purple. So now we need to figure out, so now that everyone's put down one cone on the board, you then get to say another cue. And this cue can be one or two words. Um, so I could say something like the grimace, right? Which is, that's what I've been loving to use because it's from McDonald's, but that's whatever. Um, and you've got other cool purple ones that you can use also. If you can think of, of, of a big two, two word clue that can give, and then that will kind of help guide people a little bit more. You can't say directional words. So you couldn't say darker or lighter or upper or things like that. Or and you can't say numbers either, right? So you couldn't say like, uh, you know, you couldn't say like gray 14. I, you can't give things, you've got to make sure that it's a still a word that uh, kind of has a, an emotion or a feeling to it kind of thing. So once that's all been put down and then everyone is, uh, okay, I, <laughs> nice. Um, so then once everyone has uh, uh, set their, set their, their, put down their cones, then the scoring square will go down, which we've got right there. And so then that will go down in the middle of the, of the square. And so then once that happens, uh, you get score. And so if you are, if you guessed correctly and you got the right square, you're going to get three points. And then if anybody is inside the square, they get two points. And then if you're right outside the square and you're touching it, you get one point. And then for the, for the cue giver, if you're inside, you get one point for every cone that's in there. Yeah. And so, and so then that, then everybody will go around and then you'll, you'll score, pick it up. And then the next person will go and next person will go. Katie? Yeah, um, and one thing I did want to point out is you are going to get points per cone that you have in the square. So if both of your cones were in the two point mark, you are going to get four points for that round. Um, and then play continues until each person has had the chance to be a cue giver. So in a four or a three person game, each person, each player would go twice as a cue giver. And then in a, you know, because this can handle up to 10 people, you can go around the board. Everyone can be the cue giver just once if you don't have a lot of time to play. Um, the point system does go up to 50. So we've been in rounds where it's been so much fun that we've just said, okay, whoever gets to 50 will stop versus whoever is the cue master. And that, I mean, the board is huge. Ross can barely hold it up. Um, another great thing to mention retailers when you are selling this game to the end user is that um, it, this game is all about how you perceive colors. So it is fully playable by people who do suffer from color blindness. We did have, uh, we actually have more than one person in our office who does suffer from color blindness and they have played and tested it as much as anyone else and have no problem with it because how they perceive green is how we perceive green. I don't think I would have guessed uh, lavender for that purple color, Ross. But again, this is how we perceive colors. But I would have gotten it on the grimace, so. And that's a very cool thing too. I, I've talked about this a couple of times in some other situations, but I've met more people who suffer from color blindness in gaming just in the last five years than probably the other 40 years of my life. It, it's mm -hmm. been amazing. And uh, I have a theory that the smarter you are, the more at risk you are for, for color blindness, because most of the gamers I know are very smart. But I, re I remember when I first heard about this game and I was talking to Scott and I'm like, wow, it looks really cool. It sounds really neat. It probably is going to be brutal for colorblind people. And he's like, ah, uh -uh, no. <laughs> I was like, okay. So that's really, really cool because we have a lot of people that they'll make a game that will involve colors, but color isn't the primary mechanic or the primary mechanism. And they don't think about necessarily what are the right things to do to, to make it colorblind friendly at all. But to see something like this, that is literally a full beautiful rainbow spectrum and mm -hmm. yet it's still colorblind friendly is really, really cool. So that's- And good. that's, it, it really is really cool. And I think one of the things that's, that's neat about this is it's not necessarily the color, it's the how you, per, as Katie said, mm -hmm. it's how you perceive it, right? Mm -hmm. So, and so like I've been on a, on a few live streams now with this because this game can be played over stream um, and there's been some things where it's like, okay, like grape, 
is your clue. Okay, well, if grapes are clue, there's purple grapes, there's red grapes, there's green yeah. grapes. Like, what are you going to do? And there, um, there's been some clues like ocean, where it's like, well, was it a dark blue or a light blue? And you kind of got to go and are you figure that out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. And so, and so it, it's, it, and what's fun about this game is now that it's been out, I've had a lot of my friends go pick it up. And they've been saying this has been the go-to game they've been playing at, at, at game night so far because it's so different out there. Everybody has a thought on what color they want to do for this thing and, and how can you figure that out. And um, like it's it's just a, a kind of a really kind of a new a unique way to play with with the color Pantone. Yeah. Um, um, which is cool. Just so all the retailers know, this is a brand new release. It just got released. Um, we blew through our entire stock of the first release, and we've got it on restock PO with uh, the op. So that's going to be coming in here per- fairly quickly and very soon. So if you are going online and checking, you know, availability in the warehouses, there is one or two warehouses that still has a couple of units left. Um, but it's primarily like 99% are already sold through. Um, we had a really good amount of pre-orders on this game, a really good amount of attention to it. So I uh, just want to let you know that, yes, you can put in an order for that and still be able to get it, even though it was a, a brand new release. It's just going to be a short period of time here to get that PO filled and get it over to us. But hopefully this week or next week, we'll have that all done. So um, Derek just asked, will the restock go to all the main warehouses? Yes, generally when we restock, Derek, um, Washington, St. Louis, and Jacksonville are the primary ones, um, and then New York and Southern California as well uh, will fit into that mix from time to time, depending on the demand for everything, but definitely Washington, Jacksonville, and St. Louis for sure. So. Awesome. Sorry. Back to you guys. No, mm-hmm. You're all good. Those are all good questions mm-hmm. to, to get asked. Um, so that's pretty much using cues uh, for what I, I had prepared to share. Uh, are there any questions? Um, there's no specific questions about the game that have come through yet, but as always, you know, those things can come in and any time along the, the pathway, so to speak. So if any of them pop up while we're talking about Harry Potter, I can jump back and let you know. But um, I think the biggest thing for me with Hughes and Cues, apart from obviously being designed by a very nice guy, Scott Brady, and with a great company with you guys, is it's a game that looks different. It's a game that when you see it on the shelf, the packaging kind of jumps out. Mm -hmm. It separates itself from all the other noise that's on the the shelf. And that's a big thing, right? I mean, especially in this environment where a lot of our retailers are just reopening and they're trying to get more and more foot traffic in, they're going to want things that jump out at people and that that really like speak to them as, you know, oh, I could play this with grandma or I could play this with my kids or I could play this with my buddies or anything like that. And that's, Hughes and Cues really jumps out like that, which is it's, really cool. It's funny that you bring up like the jumping out thing. Uh, I'm going to embarrass Scott here, but this is kind of a funny story. Uh, when, the, he, when, he was, when he was pitching the game to us at Origins, um, and he had, he had the game out full on the board and everything. Uh, people were walking by and were going, oh my gosh, can I play that? Not knowing it was a game pitch, you know? And so, because the board That's was- That's a good sign. The board yeah, was huge and sign. it was the color and they're like, oh my gosh, what is that? So I think we ended up doing the game pitch demo with a family because nice. they wanted to play the game. And uh, that was, I mean, I was, I was like, okay, cool. Obviously that's there's- a, That's a great start. Yeah, that's a good sign. <laughs> good. So, um, and I've really enjoyed playing this game. It, it's fantastic. I really think one of the things that, I, as you were saying, like the way that it's, that it's like, mm-hmm. this, this box jumps out. Like, like in a sea of all these different white boxes and things like that, there's not a lot that really go, look at this, right? And then it's, it's all here, even on the back. And there's no confusion from a consumer standpoint, right? If somebody sees that box, they're not going to think that that's a 18xx 4x civilization train building game or anything, right? It's like you you look at that and it almost feels, a friend of mine told me when he saw the cover, it feels like a game show. Like it's so bright and colorful that it's like you can just tell it's a party game right off the bat, which is really cool. Mm Mm-hmm. And I did want to bring up, um, you know, when we get somewhat back to normal and the retailers are able to demo it in store, the pack out of the packaging is almost perfect. So when you open up the box, this is what you're going to see um, as far as the board goes. So you can put just this sixth of the board out on a demo table with the corresponding cards and the scoring square and be able to give that 10 second demo pitch to the consumer that's really going to pull them in and be able to help you sell the game and help them teach their friends how to play the game. Uh, my, me and my friends only play party games. That's all we play. And this is perfect for that because last time we played it, unfortunately, it's been a while since we haven't been able to have parties. Um, one of our friends was cooking the whole time while we were playing it, but she was able to hear the cue 
run over to the board, place her cone, and then run back to the stove before she burnt anything. So <laughs> no one has to be, exactly, <laughs> no one was left out. It was great. That's and we great. did just start the demo program with GTS. So I would yeah. highly recommend getting this one as a demo and putting it out. And again, if you don't have space for the gigantic board, because it is huge, just use this part with the corresponding cards and a few cones. Yeah, no, that's phenomenal. Um, two, two, one great thing to talk about from your discussion and then a question that just popped up. Um, just so everyone knows, yes, uh, as Katie mentioned, USAopoly is part of our vendor demo program. The vendor demo program is fairly easy. Um, you can either get a hold of your sales rep or, or email them or place an online order. What you're allowed to do is for base games, and with USAopoly, it's specific base games because obviously there's a lot of licenses involved and things like that. Um, but you can contact your sales rep, ask them for a base game demo for your store. Um, you'll pay 25% of SRP. Uh, and then we work out back end with USAopoly and everything, but it's a great opportunity to get something like this that is that eye catching, like really easy, simple to teach, like minute or less type thing to be able to get people's attention and help drive some more, more sales, which is really good. Um, and then question came in from Jeff, uh, what's the MSRP of the game? This is my favorite part. Um, most people see that box and they immediately think, oh, this is $40 or this is $50. It's twenty four ninety nine, which is awesome. And normally, when you think of a twenty four ninety nine party game, you think of really more like a Munchkin size box or maybe like a code name size box. So that that's a really really good SRP value for what you get with that, which is nice. Awesome. Okay. Um, no other questions have come through about hues and cues, but again, if they do, I will let you guys know. So if we want to kick it over to the wizarding world of Harry Potter. <laughs> we can, I don't have any theme music or anything to do. I'll, I'll leave that up. <laughs> uh, I can sing, but it's too early for that. No one, no one wants to hear that, right? Uh, cool. Uh, so cool. So for our next, our next game we're showing off today uh, is a Harry Potter house cup competition. So in this game, it is a worker placement game where you are playing as the different houses and you are sending your students to school over the course of seven years. Um, I've got the board here on the back and then I'll pull it out in a little bit. So in this game, what you're doing is you've got all these different uh, tokens. So on you've got your, you know, I'm just going to pull it up. But you have your, uh, your school board. Dun, 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 dun. I have it out, Russ. Excellent, great. Um, I've got it too. And so in this game, you've got your school board and then you've got all these different players here, right? So there is, there's the board and then here's your student board. So on this, You've got three different students and they're all different students from the movies and you're going to be sending them on different classes to raise up their charms, uh, their potions and their magic. And so as they're learning these different things, they're going to be going to different spaces on the board, like the professor's office or a classroom or uh, different places that are on the board, uh, which will give them different stats to raise up their abilities. So they're going to have on this board, different little trackers there. And we have these cute little, Harry Potter Hogwarts Crest tokens, uh, which are nice little sliders. So on this token here, they've got the Harry Potter, if you can really see it, but it's the little Hogwarts cup on there. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole baggie full of these guys. Each student will get three of those. And those are gonna slide right in to the slider on the board here, like this. And so as each one goes up and you raise it, there's a little notch on each board where it says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So as they travel to the different places on the board each round, such as the, the classroom or the different offices, uh, they were raising up their different stats in those locations. And they'll go up and up and up and up. And as that goes on, hang with me here, you've got these different challenges that you can do. You've got easy challenges and you've got hard challenges. I'm going to show some of the cards for that. And so each round you're gonna go, cool, we were able to complete the easy challenge of the uh, Quidditch, the Quidditch team cup thing, it hasn't zoomed in there, but you can see it's got a three, 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 doesn't wanna zoom in on it, sorry about that. And so as you've got those different things, you'll take all the different, uh, for each student, all the different charms, their magic and their abilities, and if it adds up to three or it adds up to two, whichever one is needed on the board, you will complete that and then it will give you points. I'm probably just not zooming in there more. Sorry about that. So as it's got the different points and then it's got that 50 token mm -hmm. or it'll say 10 or it'll say 20. 
So each round, as you compete and complete the different challenges, you'll gain different points, which then Katie, Katie's yeah, favorite part. Yeah, that's my favorite part. Katie's favorite part. So as you complete these different things, each, uh, you've got this whole house cup uh, scoreboard thing on here, and it's got one for each house, right? And so instead of scoring it normally, like on a track around the board or things like that, you've got, and it has a nice little clicking sound. Oh, too. it's that's so nice. satisfying. Right. <laughs> and so each one is worth five. And so as you go through and you're completing the hard challenges or the easy challenges, oh, I'm just going out of the, uh, out of the thing. Uh, it, will, it will go in and uh, so that at the end of the game, once you've gone through all seven rounds or all seven years, then you will essentially uh, try to guess and figure out who's done that. Of course, you'll count it. But halfway through, you're kind of like, ooh, who has the most? You can't gauge it because you got to figure out how many jelly beans are in the jar, right? So you're trying to well, figure you, out. You just that. lost five points from Gryffindor because you dropped that one. But I'm worried. Right. Yeah, it's okay. That's okay. I'm a house. I'm a house. Uh, I'm a puff myself, so it's okay. <laughs> but, uh, that is so, yeah. possibly one of the most unique and thematically aligned yes. score trackers I've ever seen in games. That's really, yeah. really cool. It's great. And so one of the cool things with this game is so um, each each on the board, it's a little big to have up. But uh, there's different locations that there will also be on the board. So along with the classroom and along with the professor's office, you've got all these different locations they'll be able to go to too. So like here's the borough or here's uh, Double Door's office and things like that. And those will be rotating every round and they're going to have different locations you can do. Like it'll allow you to discard cards or you can gain more levels or you can gain more abilities. Um, and one of the things we tried to do with this game was to cut down the number of words and text that we have. So it's very icon heavy in a good way. So you've got this cool little icon reference card. It's got a nice walkthrough of here's what magic and experience. It's really not zooming in. I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, and so it's got like potions and charms and defense against the dark arts. And so it tells you all these different things that you're on. And that'll help walk you through, OK, I need to send um, Malfoy over to here to make sure he's leveled up there. Because as they're each gaining one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five in their different slots, as you're doing each challenge at the end of the round, you can add all their points together. So you may have some people that have are higher in charms, others that are higher in defense against the dark arts. Um, um, the question came in on Facebook because I have some retailer friends that only want to chat through there, but that's okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, good. Um, so the question was, are the actual students' names and or likenesses in the game? Meaning, can someone play Harry Potter or play Hermione or something like that? Yes. So for our license with The Wizarding World, we have licensed to the movies. And so we, we don't have any made up uh, characters. Everybody is playing as... Malfoy, Ron, Hermione, Cho, um, um, Cedric, right? So I, I, I think like in, it's supposed to be they've started at year one and mm -hmm. they're going through. So you've got all the different um, characters for each one. Yep. Ravenclaw even has all the named ones, even though you don't see them too much mm -hmm. in the stuff there. So you've got Cho and you've got uh, Padma and you've got Luna. And so on, on, the, on the, the board nice. for each one, it tells you who's who. And oh, yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll yep. go up that way. And then, of course, you can track your different challenges cards and then special knowledge and magic cards that you've picked up. Yeah, so you awesome. really are actually playing as a house. So if I were Gryffindor, my students that I would be able to send to school would be Harry, Ron, and Hermione. So, yeah, their likenesses, their names, it, you know, everything is in there. Very cool. Yeah, so the game itself, uh, it's a do-do-do. It's a two to four player game. It mm -hmm. plays about an hour and a half. Um, it's got age 11 on there, which is fantastic because that's the age that you get your little Hogwarts. Um, we love doing that with our yeah. games. I, <laughs> just I, I little love. details like it that. It's just, just little things, on. right? <laughs> and um, so, so with that, it's, it's a nice, I, I don't, I don't want to say intro into, um, into um, worker placement, worker placement. <laughs> Sorry, it's I'm still waking, still waking up here, uh, but uh, it's it, it it picks up right. So kind of like our, our our Harry Potter Hogwarts battle game, where the first round you're still kind of figuring out what's going on, and then game two and game three. In this game, with round one, round two, round seven, you pick it up. Like, mm -hmm. like if you're if you're just trying to, okay, cool. I've got my 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 students. I need to try to fill these challenges out because the first two challenges will say, hey, you need to get two points in charms and a one point in defense against the dark arts. So you look at the board and go, cool, well, I've got a classroom here and I've got a location there and I've got three different characters. I can put them out 
and do these different places, or I can send them to get more challenges. So you've got a lot of, there's a plenty of options that are on the board and everything is relatively straightforward. You have your students, there's plenty on the board and you wanna aim for those challenges. So you kind of just look at your character sheet and you go, well, I've got these stats here, I've got these stats here, I need to go do that. But as you get a little farther, like in round three and round four, some new locations are gonna pop up that are gonna kind of provide you with some extra turns and some extra abilities there. And then some of these other challenges are gonna be like, well, if you've got five of this, and three of that, you can get a whole bunch of points. So you're trying to, it's that late game building up, make sure that your foundation early is strong so that when you need like six and seven defense against the dark art points and this, you're not having to struggle to go find those base things. Um, so it, it has that good worker placement where you're like, okay, I've got my abilities going on, they're happening here. Um, I've already played this a bunch with my, with my board game, board game friends, and they really, really enjoy it. And we've had a couple of friends that aren't super into Harry Potter, but love like a Agricola in Puerto Rico and stuff like that. And they, they, they love the depth that's in this game and the options that you've got. And then of course, I think one of the things is really like yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the point checker. It's, it's really like we, when we were, when we were doing this, I'm going to talk about the game anyway, but like originally it, it had a little tracker around the board. I'm like, okay, we'll just have it travel around and do all that. But then we were messing around with this in the office and we'd been scoring the points that way. And then Cammy, the designer, was like, can we do that? And it's like, oh, we can do that. So then it was an immediate, we got to make that happen, uh, which it has the, which of course, I don't know if you can't see it, I'll pull these out in the back there, but it has the nice Great Hall Hogwarts crest on the back, which also matches the same tokens. And, so it, it has, and the box. And the box. So um, that's kind of a cool way to, for this game. It's got some good depth to it. It's a really nice worker placement Harry Potter game. Um, and you are playing as the students as you're going through. And it's a lot of thematic stuff too. Like all the locations that are in here, they're all out of the movies. Mm -hmm. So you've got all these different places like the Burrow and Fourth Pivot Drive and Goldemore Lane and Fat from Nine and Three Quarters. And it's all got cool screenshots pulled right from the movie with nice little, nice little uh, framing work on there too. So uh, yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, for me personally, this is one that I'm very excited about because my wife loves Harry Potter and pretty much every Harry Potter game you guys make, she wants to play immediately. <laughs> so, but I'm a huge worker placement fan. And um, one of my favorite worker placement games is Lords of Waterdeep. And when I first started researching this game and looking at it online, I haven't had a chance to play it yet personally, but everything I was looking at was like, wow, it looks like it's right in that level of, it's not quite the beginning, but it's not quite this like, you know, $140 giant move that cube this way kind of Euro work replacement thing at all. So the, the value of it is really good. I mean, at $49.95, you're getting an IP that is super popular. It seems mm -hmm. to just continue to stand the test of time. But you also get some pretty wickedly awesome components with the yeah. whole scoring track. Here's the stack of challenges cards, too. Wow. So you've got, and there, <laughs> so you've got a whole bunch of mm -hmm. things. And then these are all thematic as well, right? So you've got different things like avoid the bludger, playing a Quidditch match, you know, finding a noble room. And that just goes on and on and on and on and on. And then you've got more of these things, too, that are all these spells you can learn. Because um, then you've got spells that can give you different additions and more points. So you've got things like, oh my gosh, i got to read spells in the morning. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> a, uh, a Mortinia. Oh, oh, I can't even do that. Uh, a a hair-raising potion. Is or, it a Harry Potter spell or a disease? Which yeah, one? right. <laughs> the sleeping drought of the elixir of life, right? So you've got all these cool spells that you can put in there, too, that will give you more, more charms and magic to then unlock more... Uh, more challenges. And this is a game that I would imagine that while you were saying that the board is very big and demo space is always very precious, this is a game that strikes me that you could not necessarily need to put out as a demo, but you could put it out as a display, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Keep it like a smaller area and just yeah. have that up with the gems inside of it. That alone is going to get people looking at it and mm -hmm. go, oh, I, I just want to buy that, right? <laughs> like, exactly. Especially with the with with the box with the board just out as a square. Yep. It's got your your pickups. So here's the different cards out. So you could have the cards out. You could have a few pieces down, and you can have one of the player boards out. So if you were to have this a little set up and then with the uh, with the scoring sheet, you've got a wonderful look at the game. It's got everything out there and you're good to go. And it's, it's got really nice presentation. Um, I love how our Harry Potter games, they kind of look like they definitely fit within the world, mm -hmm. right? So they have that nice, like here's the crest and here's the stone and 
all of that. So you guys pay a lot of well. attention to small details like that. Like, you know, I know we kind of giggled about it, laughed about it, but the whole 11 plus and 11 being the age for Hogwarts, like when you're, when your consumers are fans of the IP, they notice that and they love that. And they just, it, it makes them dig in even harder, which is awesome. It's definitely something that we strive for. Like a lot of the designers like in house at the studio, they're huge fans too. Like I wouldn't pick anybody else to have to work on Harry Potter games. Like nice. Cammie Mandel, she's the one who does a lot of our stuff there. And like she ran a big Harry Potter party for her kids a couple of years ago where she made brooms and did potions and did all these things. And she came into work the next day with a whole witch hat on. And I was like, what did you do? That's so yeah. cool. So I need to be adopted by you. <laughs> oh yeah. Right? No, not only that, she bought a remote control battery operated candle and each wand got each kid got their own wand. So her husband was standing around the corner and the kid would pick up a wand and try to turn the candle on. And every other turn he'd like turn press the remote and turn the candle on. That's, That's how much this woman cool. loves Harry Potter. That's and that cool. dedication goes into every game she makes for us. That's nice. Um, Derek has a question actually about a game that we're not talking about, but is right there nearby. Um, he has a, a question says on a different topic, is the escape from haunted mansion, a replayable game or are items destroyed when you're playing? I, I can grab it. Are we cool with you grabbing it really quick? By all I means. Can, yeah. Cool. This is a great Sounds game. I'd love for you to talk about it. Cool. Let me do that really quick. So, uh, for Scooby-Doo escape from the haunted mansion, a Cody Chronicles game, it is a, uh, a single playthrough. So it is, it is replayable in the sense where nothing gets destroyed. So I can do a quick little unboxing, right? So here's the game. So what's cool in this game, it's a very thematic storytelling game. So no one's playing as Freddy or Daphne or Velma. You're all playing as the gang. Uh, it, it's a solo game or you can play it all together. And so you're walking through. So essentially the mystery machine has broken down in front of a haunted mansion. You go inside to ask for gas. The butler invites you in. You meet the head of the household and then ah, a storm happens. And then it's just Velma out in the main room and she needs to go find where everyone is. And so as that happens, so you've got this cool, it unboxes and it's got a nice read me first. And so then this, this book kind of walks you through the first little bit as it goes, okay, here we are. You're now in the house and you need to set up these cards. And so you've got all these different cards that show you what to do. And I'll pull out a few of those right now. But essentially what's gonna happen is Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. You've got all these different map tiles that are here. And so on that first map tile, like here's, here's the house, right? And so you've got all these different things in the room there. So you've got 201, 11, 401, 301, and you're in the foyer, right? And so if, if you're Velma, you're gonna go, cool, I'm gonna go check that out. And so then what happens is you've got all these different books. And so you've got Freddy and you've got Scooby-Doo and Daphne and Shaggy and then Velma and each person has a different thing they can do. So Velma, her ability is to research. Shaggy's ability is to eat. Daphne's ability is to use. Scooby's ability is to smell. And then Freddy's ability is to investigate. So on the different items you can go cool we're going to investigate this we're going to eat this we're going to try to use it and see what we can do and when that happens then you will go and open up their book you'll match the number to whatever is going on and it'll say if you can do different stuff so like with freddie right here freddie has the introduction right and so it'll say there you are in the foyer it's a dark and stormy night and the mystery incorporated gang has been driving across the country to their next destination when Scooby smells smoke, ruh row, Scooby exclaims as the engine begins to overheat. Oh, sorry, I could go into that all morning, right? So, um, but so it's very, it's very thematic as the different uh, things play through. But as you go through, you've got all these different, I know the whole point of the question was, you've got all these different envelopes that say, do not open until, do not open until, do not open until. As you open them, you pull things out, but there aren't any stickers. You don't write on anything. Nothing is going down. And we had a walkthrough in the rule book that shows how to pack it back up again. So you can easily just take it and then put it back in the thing. It shows you how to do all that. Everyone's got these cool um, stand. I haven't even opened the game yet, but I've got all these little components here. You've got a full stack of all the clue cards for all the different things that are going on. And there's a bunch more of these envelopes that have stuff, but everything is made so that you can 
foot, put it right back inside. We built it so that you could, after playing it, you could give it to a friend or play it again in five months when you've forgotten how to play it. Um, and, and what's, that never and what, happens. <laughs> that never happens, no. Believe me, I've, I've only played halfway through so that I, I, I can play it again with some more friends. And we played the first half, even though I'd already played it a couple times, and I'd already forgotten the clue again. So it was like, oh my gosh, what are these? So like, all these envelopes allow you to kind of put everything back into it so that you can pack it up and re-gift it. And what's also very cool is there's two games for the one game. So it's, it's kind of like a, like, like a, a, a two-part movie. So you've got this one point, and now you've gotten to this part in the mansion, and now you can take a break. And then if you want to come back, here is the intro to part two. You're rocking and rolling. Um, yeah, because it's about a three-hour if you were to sit down and go nonstop. So that little intermission point is kind of nice if people need a break or you need to do it over a two-night period. Yeah, I, obviously with an escape room game, you can get up and leave whenever you need to. Uh, but, but the way that we've built it this way allows you to, cool, you finished, now you can pack it up and then come back for part two, uh, which is really nice. It's very thematic. I, I, I like really like all the different things that are going on to it. It, it, it plays and reads like it's an episode. Um, already as we were doing it, I was trying to think like, oh my gosh, how can we do like a Scooby-Doo and Celebrities version where we get different licenses in there, but that's a whole other topic for the day. <laughs> right. yeah, um, yeah, sure. We also just announced that we're going to be doing a Shining version too, so it's going to be Escape from the Overlook Hotel, uh, which I'm super excited for that. Um, people cool. that are fans of the Shining, that's going to be very expansion. So right now, there aren't any expansions planned for the Haunted Mansion, but we have announced that we're going to be doing um, the Shining, uh, cool. which will be coming out later in the fall. We do have a couple of questions that have come in here. So uh, Manuel said, Haunted Mansion looks great. The envelope system is great. Yeah, this did just release uh, recently. I put the SKU in there for everyone in the chat window. So if you uh, aren't familiar with it, you can look it up and pull it up. Um, and then uh, Jeff has a question, which uh, is very interesting. He says on another title, does the op have plans to release more talisman titles by this winter? Batman was received with mixed reviews, but Kingdom Hearts sells really well still today. Um, I think I, I, I'm a huge Batman fan personally. I think Batman comes down to, do you have Batman consumers in your store or not? And if you do, you're going to, you're going to do very well with it. Cause I've, I've seen a lot of people actually pick that game up and do well that are Batman lovers. But um, we know obviously those two just recently came out and obviously did really well. I know there is a talisman game that you guys are coming out with, with an IP, but that is not in the U S I think that's a UK only thing. So I don't know if you guys can talk about that or want to talk about wait, that. Wait. Yes, so for, for Talisman, we have uh, Talisman Batman uh, Super Villains Edition, uh, and then we have the Talisman Kingdom Hearts Edition. Both are a little different. The Batman is much more PvP heavy, so and it's and it's and it's very dark and grim. It has a cool sepia tone over the board. You're playing as Batman's uh, like uh, Arkham Arkham Rose Gallery, so you're playing as Mr. Freeze or Ra's al Ghul or Poison Ivy. You're trying to get to the middle of the command center at Arkham so that you can release all the prisoners and become king of Arkham. Um, and then Batman is in the game and he is essentially trying to track you down. And uh, for an extra an ability, he plays as the Reaper expansion from fourth edition. So when you roll a one, then you get to roll as Batman and you can move him around and he does all kinds of cool stuff. So it's got, it's much more of a, you need to defeat the other players and Batman while you're going through, where Kingdom Hearts on the kind of flip side is super colorful. All this unique art of all these different characters from Agrabah to Olympus to Merlin's castle and Mickey's, and it's just, it's beautiful. I want to shadow box the game, it looks so good. And then it's very co-op. So when you land on another space with another player, you battle the Heartless together instead of Mickey fighting Goofy. Um, and then you're trying to find a Keyblade to do all these different things. So they're very different games. Obviously, Kingdom Hearts has a huge fan base too. Like when we shared the announcement last year, we had over 18 million impressions over the course of like a couple of weeks, which is just crazy to think about. And Batman, of course, um, has this big thing. So we just announced that we're going to be doing another Talisman. That'll be uh, Talisman Star Wars edition. Uh, that'll be for the EMEA only. So it'll be in the EU and overseas there. Um, but that version for, for a hot second on that, what's cool about that one is it covers all of Star Wars. So it, it covers all nine movies. So you've got, you're getting characters from Darth Maul, and Obi-Wan Kenobi, all the way to Rey and so on. And you're traveling to all the different planets across the, the Star Wars world. And so you're either as a Sith or a Jedi. So you're raising up your force points. You've got cards that you can play that allow you to steal cards with the force or to push characters away. It's very ally heavy. So a lot of the cards that you're picking up 
are going to be characters that can join your party or characters that you can battle against. So on the card, they're going to have light side or dark side. And so if you're a, if you're a light side Jedi, you know, BB-8 can join you. But if you are a, a Sith and you're playing as Darth Maul, bb is not going to join your team. So you got to go fight him. Um, and a lot of these characters go out. And so in this one, you're trying to find a Sith Wayfinder. That takes the role of a talisman. And then you're trying to get to Exegol so that you can battle the Emperor and either strike him down and save the universe or strike him down and then take his place. So, uh, which is pretty fun. Uh, the, the tokens, we haven't really revealed them too much for that yet, but they have a similar theme. Um, so they all look very stoic in the Star Wars universe. They have kind of a cool, they look a, a bust feel to it. And uh, it's, it's really neat. We've got all the, all the different spaces are all new um, art for across the Star Wars universe, which is really, really neat. I'm excited because that means we get to have our art on like Wikipedia and show off that we did new new places and locations, which is pretty nice. It's probably good to note too. Um, it's, it's really kind of funny because I had a conversation this weekend. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of go on a little bit of a tangent here, but I think it's good for the retailers to hear. Um, I went into a retail store this weekend actually, and I asked for one of your games. And the person behind the counter told me, oh, their games are always exclusive with Target for the first 30 days. And I'm like, no, no, they're not. <laughs> and the actual response I got from the, the guy behind the counter at the retailer was, well, I, yeah, they are. I work here. And I'm like, uh, hmm, okay. <laughs> you know, so we had a short conversation. And then I actually found the owner of the retail store and had a private conversation with him and talked to him about it. I'm like, you know, hey, you know, your guy is completely misinformed. And, and not only that, like, no offense, as a retailer, you should not be pushing me to target. <laughs> like, you, yeah. should, you should be saying, let me see if I can get it for you and, and how I can get it for you, right? But I, I think it's really interesting because a lot of people do have some, you know, preconceived notions about things. And when it comes to you guys, um, there are a lot of things that you guys are working on in the hopper. And, and us as, you know, part of an NDA, we get a little bit of, you know, insight into some of that stuff in, in basics, not in too much detail. Um, but generally, you guys will announce something usually tied to some type of licensing contract, right? Um, like with Scooby-Doo, for example, like this is perfect timing for Scooby-Doo to come out because the movie Scoob just came out. So there's a lot of connectivity and stuff like that. And um, if you've never been involved with IPs and, and, and big giant things like Star Wars and Harry Potter yeah, and stuff like that, there's a lot of very specific things you have to kind of run by in terms of guidelines and what you can say and what you can't say. So a lot of times we have, we've had some retailers ask us, how come I'm just finding out about the USAopoly release right now when it was like just announced this morning and we're like, because it was just announced this morning, nobody else knew about it. And we were nobody was able to say anything about it. So I, I think it's a good thing just for retailers to know that you know while you guys make amazingly great games, at times if they ever get frustrated with hearing about what's available or when it's going to be available, that usually will come down to a lot of the licensing issues and, and concerns around that. Yeah, we we work with, like across the board with Disney, Marvel, Star Wars, Warner Brothers, to, like Konami, like all different things. So we're doing things like Godzilla and. Rugrats and Harry Potter and like we just announced we're doing a big thing with with Pixar uh, for Onward with Quest of Yore, right? And we, we worked hand in hand with the with the director and, and the writing team for this whole game and like we were prepping for a huge thing in September when it was going to come out on Disney Plus uh, because it came out in March. You know things got changed a little bit and so like as we move around we try to make sure that we hit the beats that the licensors are presented so like when we announced the shining game we announced it on the 40th anniversary or 20th, 20th anniversary of, of the game's release when we announced our batman the batman who laughs that was announced on like the first uh batman comic release reveal so we try to make sure that we're hitting these beats same thing with scooby-doo as you said like for scoob you know we wanted to make sure that we're hitting that that way mm -hmm. that when we like from the back end, when we have our marketing pitches and PR pitches, we can pitch, hey, we have this thing coming out around this time, so we're more likely to have a lot of these larger news sites pick them up, which then means it'll drive traffic to websites and, oh my gosh, we're to game stores and so on. So it's this, it's this marketing news cycle that, I mean, I could talk about forever. But, <laughs> okay, but mm -hmm. we, we, we would definitely try to do our best to hit those things. I, I, for example, with Kingdom Hearts Talisman, when we announced that, it was right when Kingdom Hearts 3 had come out. So anybody was dying for more Kingdom Hearts news, and that was a, it was a great time to have that work out. So we tried cool. to do that. Same thing with Star Wars. When that goes out, um, it was you know 
it's always good to have Star Wars. So one of the questions in the chat was, is that going to come to the U.S.? Yeah. Um, our Star Wars games are for EMEA only. Mm -hmm. um, it's very unfortunate. I wish we could have them in the U.S. like so, so bad. Uh, mm -hmm. But they're currently, due to licensing restrictions, uh, they're only available in EMEA. Mm -hmm. um, so... There were a couple other questions that came in. Um, Derek asked a question, and then uh, Manuel and Julio have a couple other questions too. Um, uh, so Derek asked a question of, is uh, the Escape from Haunted Mansion, is that the first in a Coded Chronicles series? I think the yes is the answer. Yes, yes. Of Shining, of course. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I presume that if that does well, there may be more down the line, and who knows what. Yeah, what so, so I, as, as we said earlier, so we, we already announced a, uh, a second one. So we're, we're going to be coming out with... Uh, the Shining Escape from the Overlook Hotel, which will be coming out in the fall. Um, and we love the engine. It's a lot of fun. We love how thematic you can get with it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm certain that we'll be doing more in the future. Yep. Um, the other one that came up, um, so uh, Manuel asked, do you have a restock coming soon for Scooby-Doo? Um, we do have all of them are, are committed right now. So what we just received back in. So if you need to get that game, let your sales rep know and we can restock that game immediately. Um, we just had a restock land, like, I think like a, like last week, it was like late last week. Um, and right now all those show is committed in the system. Um, the other thing too, and this is just good to know, this is more of an operational thing. That's the boring side of the business, but sometimes, uh, retailers will contact us and say, Oh, you know, this is out of stock and I want to get something. It may not necessarily be out of stock from time to time. There's situations that will arise where a sales rep will put an order into our system and either for whatever reason, especially now in today's world with all the, the craziness going on, there's a lot of different reasons it could happen, but it may just not ship and they may not cancel it and remove it out of the system. So if somebody ordered like six copies of a game out of like our Jacksonville warehouse, but it hasn't shipped yet and the rep hasn't gone in and canceled it yet, while we try to get them to do that on an active basis, there may be a time lapse there where you as a retailer check it out and go, oh, they're out of stock when we really actually have like five or six like able to ship right now for stuff like that. So if you ever see anything like that, feel free to contact your sales rep, ping me. I'm happy to, to check it out and let you know. Um, right now, looking in the system, yes, all the Scooby-Doo stuff is already spoken for, it looks like. Um, but that's something that, again, because it's been obviously very popular from the launch and still continues to be popular, that's actively restocked all the time with OP. So, yeah, not a problem with that. The other one, and this is, uh, this is definitely one I will bat your direction for both of you to answer. Um, Julio asked, are the games available in Latin America? Um, we do have some retailers that are in Mexico and Latin America and different areas that are doing very, very well with several games in their, their region. But obviously with the question of you guys formerly being USA, you know, are these things specific to that? I know the answer to that, but I'm going to let you guys answer it because it's probably best coming from you guys. <laughs> So the answer is maybe <laughs> um, because of our licensing restrictions. Some of our products can be sold in Latin America and some cannot. 99% um, of our line, maybe 95 to 90% is for US and Canada only. But as we develop these relationships with other countries and other distributors, we are expanding. We have to get permission from all parties involved before we can take a game into another country. So we do have a few different um, games that are available in Latin America and uh, we are working with distribution partners in those countries to get those games there. But everything that GTS would buy from us would be for US and Canada only. And even then sometimes with SpongeBob, for example, we don't even have Canada rights. So that one is US only. So we're working to get more rights. Um, and if you have any questions on that, we can answer those further uh, yeah, it, based on which game in which country you're interested in. And, and that being said, like I, if you do want to see those games, and we, we need to know that because- yes, absolutely. Like, okay, so if A, if you're in this area that hasn't been able to get our games, please let us know because mm -hmm. all, it only takes, as Katie said, we just have to go ask, Yep. right? So, uh, and, and normally, you know, it, it depends. So- mm -hmm. So the, um, the obvious follow-up question to that is, how can people get a hold of you to ask that question or anything else? Because I'm sure that's going to be something that people would like to touch base with you on. Absolutely. You can just go ahead and email me directly. My email is K-L-O-W, T as in Tom, H-E-R, at usaopoly.com. So that's K-Lowther or Lothar at usaopoly.com. 
I'll bet you get a lot of different pronunciations of that last name. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, when I'm spelling it on the phone, Lothar is just easier to spell. So that's, that's I'm sure works. there's probably somewhere, some, someone somewhere tries to be fancy and like, oh, is it UTA <laughs> or anything? Like that. uh, <laughs> that's funny. But no, I, I just put that into chat too, just so everyone mm -hmm. can have that. And we'll make sure that's part of the YouTube uh, video when we post it up as well. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, we, we are starting to see, a lot of activity in Latin America around both English and Spanish speaking board games, um, which is really cool because we've actually started to see some more publishers start to make um, not just a Spanish language version of the game, but games that will have both English and Spanish. Mm -hmm. It's really, really cool. Um, and we've been pushing for more games that don't have as much text too. So for they example, that about the Harry Potter. Yeah. Thing. So mm -hmm. like, for example, Hughes and Cues doesn't have any text outside of the rule book on it. Right. It's just right. the cards just have the number on them and, and, the, and the letter. So that game is literally just matching a color to the board, doing that up. Uh, Harry Potter has a little bit of text on it still. Uh, but, but for those, for Harry Potter games, like those are ones we're definitely looking at doing more uh, localization with. It's like we just announced we're doing, um, well, G German Hogwarts battle came out last year with Hutch. Um, and then we've had a number of games that are also uh, with illustrations and so on. So um, we, I, our entire line is not just English. We, we do have games right. we are pushing more out there. So if you have questions about how you can get our games in different languages or what we should be focusing on, please let us know. Yeah, I would, I would highly recommend that, you know, because a lot, a lot of times in this industry, we don't know what we don't know, right? And, and right. there's situations where you as a publisher may think, you know, hey, Hughes and Cues would do great in Canada, or it would do great in Puerto Rico, or wherever it may be. But if you don't really know the actual demand, it's extremely hard to go back to anyone with a license and say, hey, this is how many we think we're going to be able to do for you if you apply this license to it. So yeah, definitely reaching out and just letting, you know, anyone at USIopoly know, obviously Katie directly, because she handles all the distributor partners and everything, but letting them know, you know, hey, this is the region I'm in. This is the game that we're looking for. Even if it's something simple, just saying, hey, I'm a retail store and I want three copies or I want five copies, like just that data alone can start to help that kind of snowball start to get started with the discussion and get things moving. So that's really, really good. So, and I can tell you from working with her on an almost daily basis, Katie is very, very quick to reply. So <laughs> I try. <laughs> awesome. That's all the questions that have come through. So um, unless there are anything else that you want to touch on Ross or Katie, I think I've got one more thing really quick. If we're just yeah. showing off games, I got behind oh. me, right? So oh, yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. Your uh, head's been blocking that. Like I, I, I try to do my best. It is been setting up from home and the whole home office thing. I sure. tried to do my best to build this little studio. But like I have my, my 40 K stuff around there too. Nice. But, uh, you know, so it's, it is what it is, right? So uh, we have another one of our games that I believe is out now, right, Katie? It is absolutely out now. And it is my personal favorite. No, this one is, this one is so good. I, this is one of these ones where it's like, I, I want game to happen so bad. Again, uh, great for parties. Katie, you, you, for you, parties. You, you want to talk about it? Sure. So this is a team-based version of Telestrations, which is our best-selling game company-wide still. So you'll have teams of two to three players. One person on each team is gonna be what we're calling an artist. And their only job is to hold the pen and try to guess what the drawing is. All right, the guide or the director actually holds the board. They know what the secret word is and they move the board underneath the pen to get the artist to draw whatever the secret word is. And since this is a team-based version, it's a, it's a race. So every team is drawing the same secret word and every team is racing to get the points associated with being the first to guess it correctly. So we are extremely excited for this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all about it. it it's, 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 it's been a blast to kind of play it. Mm -hmm. We played it at Gamma uh, back in March and mm -hmm. the word we had was horizon. <sighs> and so I had, I, we were doing a team, it was me and Pat versus Aldi and Eric. And I kept thinking it was island because we did the we did the the line with the little so I was like island sun something and it was just like that even the chat was screaming at us oh my gosh you got to get this thing going on so uh -huh. it's it's funny because as you're playing this game and you've got different teams people are throwing different words out and they're yelling things so because you're all playing at the same time and you all have the same clue so what like it's kind of that you gotta gotta figure it out it's, it's blast mm -hmm. it plays really quick sometimes you are just locked in with somebody and it's really 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 fun. But it's one of those games where it's just like it's quick, it's fun, it's a good, it's a good loud, um, 
join. I mean, this is one of those games where it's like when, when Game Night comes back, it's an attention yeah. getter. It's the kind of thing that, like you said, people are yelling, kind of like that Captain Sonar Space Cadets thing. Very like, much so. Very much so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah everyone's talking. And yeah, for sure. Um, I just put the skew for that into the yep. chat as well. This has been ridiculously popular. So this has also sold through on its first run with us on everything. Mm -hmm. So we have restock POs in already. But the one thing I want to make sure everybody knows on this, we restock based on the demand we're seeing in the marketplace. If you have orders and haven't put them into our system or haven't contacted your sales rep, let them know because that helps us bump up those POs to make sure we cover the demand. So that's a, it's a really big, important thing. And for the most part, I mean, we have zero problem getting things from USA Oply. It's super fast. You guys have really good stock, really good warehouses to ship out to. And, you know, usually within like a day or two, we can, you know, get a PO in and get stuff out, which is really, really good. Sean Rainwright just chimed in. He said, uh, I just don't play this with Kane. He's ruthless. <laughs> yeah, Kane, Kane kind of is the designer for this game. And it's really cool that we are able to work with him to kind of bring another game into the Telestrations family. Mm -hmm. um, this this game really fits right alongside with Upside, mm -hmm. like, like with Telestrations and After Dark and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, it's it's a blast. I'm, yep. I, when I, the minute I got my copy, I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I, just on a personal note, like, I, it's, it's fun. So and, it's and for you know, four to 12, oh, sorry, Scott. It's for okay. four to 12 players and is only an MSRP of nineteen ninety nine. That's the best part. So for 20 bucks, you can have 12 people at a party having a great time. Uh, it's also won some major awards that we don't have permission to discuss yet. So keep an eye out for that because it is definitely making waves, not only in the gaming world, but in the toy world as well. Nice. That's really good news. That's great. And, and I think it, it kind of shows with this whole discussion that we've had today, really kind of that kind of full spectrum of all the different games that you guys have available to people, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, we've talked a lot about on the webinars about focusing on brands first and games second, right? You know, it's, it's very easy to get caught up in this world, especially with Kickstarter and everything where people are like just chasing that one next game that they think is going to be the hot thing, but it's always kind of a short term play, right? And when you focus on the brands and the people who have very, you know, huge footprints in the gaming industry, their games are generally going to sell more consistently over the long term than the short term. And that's where your guys' games fall into. But not only that, they're such a wide array, right? If I'm a Harry Potter fan, there's something. If there's a Star Wars fan, there's something. If I'm a Marvel fan, there's something. You guys have some stuff coming out later this year that we probably can't talk about yet, but it's probably going to blow some people away. <laughs> Are you gonna Are you gonna show it? <laughs> I mean, if, if we have like two more seconds, I don't mind teasing. Yeah, because if you're gonna show it, I think you're gonna show. Then you know, this is something that I think every retailer I've talked to is very excited about. So hold on, let me. I got too much stuff in front of me. I'm just looking <laughs> for game boards. Give me two seconds here. I mean, just, well, just in the four games we've talked about, right? Yeah. Scooby Doo, Harry Potter. Are you so Are you talking about about this, Scott? Is this what you want to see? I uh, am talking. No, I'm not oh. talking about. That. Oh, so oops, I'm talking oops, about oops, something well, else. <laughs> uh, that's all good. Oh, well, uh, for five seconds. So this, this, this is good. This is this good. Is the, uh, this is the, uh, we, we, we had a gamma, so I'm not sure if anything crazy yeah. here, but this is the, uh, this is the, the player board, the character sheet for our Quest of Your Barley's Edition game, yep. which is our, our role-playing game we're coming out with Pixar. So if, if you saw the, the Onward film earlier this year, or it's on Disney+, Plus, so we're doing a role-playing game that takes you through um, a, a new story, but it's Barley as the quest master, and he's doing these different things. So if you've seen the movie, it's a love letter to role-playing games and to gamers. Um, and so we worked with Disney and, and Pixar on making this game, crafting it up. It's a nice intro into role-playing game. It's got a cool little system there with your different dice. And based on that, it's got a cool little backside, all these pre generated characters for different stuff. We'll have more to share on that for sure. I just thought that was that's phenomenal timing because role playing yeah. games have grown so much already, just naturally. But yeah, now it's got with some, of the, online. some of the minis in there too. So there's the Manticore. Yeah, you were showing that earlier. Yeah. Yeah, really yeah, yeah. So I got so there's there's, there's plenty to do. So I, really uh, but yeah. So we've got we've got a lot more in the works. I, I think one of the cool things people can do if they if they want to find out more about our releases is make sure that you get on our newsletter because um, we have a retailer newsletter that goes out. Um, we have all these different things. We've got um, a couple more, like our website, we're always running with different articles and blogs. We've got a couple of things coming out this week that we're gonna be announcing. Our social media, so on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. If you're playing games uh, in your stores, or if you're showing off uh, different games, like, and you have a demo, oh my gosh, we just got a new restock of games from the op, and you tag us on Twitter. We love resharing and retweeting that kind of thing. So we are, we try to be as active as we can. 
uh, with our, our retail partners. So if, if you want to find out more about what we got going on, be sure to hang out and follow us on social media because we were, as Scott said, like we we're doing a lot, you know, and we've got more stuff coming out for some of our licensed munchkins. We've got some more stuff coming out for, for more rising stuff. I not to mention puzzles and all the, Katie can talk about it for a while too, but we're, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're really excited and it's, it's fun that we get to kind of create and bring a lot of these pop culture, you know, yeah. stories and movies and books into the gaming world. Um, and the, the games that we do, they, they have stories and they have, they have lasting value, um, which is really they nice. They make memories. I mean, I, I mean, at the end of the day, that's, it's funny that I always say that, but I mean, I, I tell people, I'm not in the business of making board games. I'm in the business of making memories. And, and that's really truthfully what your games do, because most of the time people walk away from that. Like you said earlier, like you play the Harry Potter game and you want to play immediately, like right again. Like there's, there's that story moment where it's like, do you remember that time we were playing Harry Potter and everyone thought it was this and you know, they, you messed it up and then this happened. And it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. things there that are great. So um, and just the retailers know I just popped in the retailer link as well. So um, uh, if you're in chat, you can click on that. Um, the opt.game game slash retailers. It's got some great information there for you as well. Great. Awesome. Well, Katie, Ross, thank you very much. We're going a couple of minutes over, which is usually pretty rare, but it means that we've had a lot of awesome stuff to talk about, which is cool. So um, again, as a reminder, all of these games are in super high demand. So if you see them out of stock in your warehouse, contact your sales rep, let them know. As I mentioned, all of the, all four of them that we talked about are on restock POs of everything. So definitely get your orders in if they aren't in already. The reason I say that is I wanna make sure that, you know, we're not just ordering what we know we have in the system right now, but we're also ordering enough more to cover. We always do order a percentage over to cover everyone, but that number ever very rarely works out. There's always, you know, some both science and art with that. So it's always, mm -hmm. Um, but really do appreciate your time. Retailers, thank you very much. I know, especially now, it's just absolutely crazy. So really appreciate everyone taking the time to join. And uh, other than that, as a reminder, if you need to reach out, you can reach Katie directly at K-L-O-W-T-H-E-R at USAopoly.com. So awesome. Until we see you next time, have a great week in your stores. Thank you all so much.